What is up, everyone? JD here. Hope you're doing well today. We're going to be jumping into five knives that I think are affordable knives that I really like. Let's jump into it. All right, so I have five knives here. I did my best to make sure that I kept them all under 100 with an affordable price range. And there are a few that are right around or maybe even under that $50 price point and I think well worth a look at. I'm gonna kick it off with one that is probably going out of stock but I think is gonna be coming back because it was fairly popular and I think there's an opportunity to do different variants of this one. That is the Devo Knives Pony Stout. I really like the size of this one. You got a full forward finger choil and I'm able to get all four fingers on here coming in at 2.87 inches on that 14 c 28 in blade thumb lands in a really good spot to do detailed work and if you do have to break down um, a thin occasional box here or package here or there it works really well you got a nice hollow grind on this one again that ford finger choil is really well done the micarta and the g10 i had the blacked out variant because i wasn't sure which one i wanted more the g10 on it felt like a carbon fiber it was really well done I think QSP, my editor will let me know for certain, is the uh, manufacturer on this one, and they just did such a good job on it. You do have still hardware and still backspacer on here to keep the price down. And I think this is like a $60-ish knife over on uh, White Mountain Knives with the discount code JD for EDC, so you can save a little bit of money on it. But very fidgety, really smooth action. Very well constructed. Mine has remained dead center ever since I've finished the disassembly and oiled and cleaned it. It's still riding on the factory bearings, which are really nice. I keep this around because I like it so much. Um, it's nice to throw in the fifth pocket. Really good pouch knife. And I like to use it for the channel comparison for the sub three inch. This is a great knife option here for anyone out there on a budget that just wants something small, maybe to throw in the fifth pocket. Maybe you don't even want it in your main pocket, or if it's something you're looking for that's a summer carry, this is going to be really good for that. And I like both variants very much. I haven't checked here recently, so my editor will throw up on the screen. If this is still in stock, I think there were still some left at White Mountain Knives. And again, I hope they bring back more variants of this one. And if there's anything that they do, this one has slight contouring, which I don't think the original Stout had that. I think it was flat scales. That very subtle contouring really helps with the ergonomics on this one. But that is the first one to kick us off. The next one is going to be one that I think flies under the radar for a lot of people. Migron does a really good job with their knives, and the Moyarl is no exception to that. They've recently come out with different colorways. They even had at the time of this video recording, a Stormtrooper edition. So all white handles, blacked out liners and hardware, and a black PVD coated blade. So it has that total Stormtrooper look. I really like that. Uh, plays on my Star Wars emotions very much so. Very fidgety. This has a great detent to it. Very snappy coming out. 14C28N is done really well, nice and thin behind the edge. You have a dedicated Ford finger choil that makes this really friendly for all hand sizes, medium all the way up to the triple XL that you see here on the knife. Very, very comfortable. Great access to the lock bar. They chamfered it out, milled it out here so you can get access to it. Very easy to disengage. And the way that they did the nub here kind of stops, but even if you came down lower, it would still catch on the skin before you get to the blade's edge. They also did a nice job thinning this out all the way to the tip. So you have good strength out to the tip for working and using this knife a lot. But it's really thin behind the edge, so it slices really, really well. You can probably tell on the knife, and I'm having to move up here, you can see all the scratches and stuff from where I've definitely pushed and used this one. And I've dropped it back very nicely. I will say the factory edge did a it held an edge well, but when I actually put my own edge on here, I've noticed that has really held up even better. It's um, been tougher. It seems like it's holding a lot longer. And again, I just really like that this is super clean when open. Nice ergos, very good contouring around the edges throughout the knife. There's no sharpness whatsoever. They even gave you a reversible 
uh, titanium pocket clip. I wanted to say deep carry. It's not deep carry. Reversible titanium clip with this style pocket clip, even though it looks nice. It does leave a little bit out of the pocket, but I don't really think that that is too bad at all. They didn't really worry about with the lanyard holes. No extras with this one. Just very straightforward. Again, very good fidget factor, but even if you don't like to fidget with your knife, the deployment on this is very, very straightforward with the keyhole style opening hole. You can open it with a thumb flick, reverse flick if you're into being fancy. And these are the factory bearings, and they, again, really well done. I like the G10's um, knurling on here. It's very grippy, again, without being so aggressive that it's going to saw away at your pocket going in and out of the pocket. This one for $50 is a really good deal. You're not going to find much else out there that's offering 14C28N, G10, or I think... Are they doing micarta on this one, or was it just a really micarta-ish color G10? I, I want to say they're all G10, but still, G10 is very durable. It's going to hold up well in a work environment. And then they have the Stormtrooper one if you want to dye that. But I also think they came out with like a really light gray. So you could dye this. So you have some options for customization. But Migron, whether you like you know the Moriarl because it's smaller, or they have the Valona, which is a larger knife, really, really good options. Another one that I like a lot, and uh, full disclosure, this is the titanium one. So coming in at, I think they they start without the clip at like $70, $80. So still under $100, but you can pick this up for under $50. Um, they run sales all the time. They had the Artisan 10 code that's been lingering out there forever. We can get 10% off on their website. But you're getting AR, RPM9. You're getting a button lock and or liner lock. They're doing both variants. The button lock has flat scales, so it's a little bit more thinner, which is nice for carry. And if you don't really like a big chunky knife in hand it's going to feel really thin in the hand and then they have the slightly contoured handles on the liner lock version to give it just a little bit more feel in hand i personally have found that with the button lock it doesn't have that chamfering out here for that liner lock and i feel like fills the hand out a little bit nicer on here and they did a really good job on the button lock so the action has been really satisfying with this one it's not super strong detent but it's by no means weak either it's just right there in the middle tuned well for a variety of people to be able to use no side to side play no up and down lock rock on this one just a perfect example of a pocket knife very slim um, they even did the barrel kind of hidden in here for anyone out there that likes a lanyard it does come with standard with a steel reversible deep carry pocket clip this one here was the show exclusive that came with the titanium clip and the blacked out hardware you can get this titanium clip but it ships with the natural finish that you see here like that stone finish on the steel hardware it doesn't have the black coating, so just keep that in mind. They only did these specifically for Blade Show var variants. Flipper tab on here is very intuitive. Again, I talk about this all the time. You can't hold it in the same position that you try to when you want to flick it and flip it. It's not going to be very intuitive. You just got to shift it up a little bit, open it, and then just roll it into the position very quickly. Uh, very easy to use. I wish the jimping was a little bit more aggressive, but again, if you're hitting it right in the sweet spot, right against the middle of that big fl front flipper tab, it's going to open just fine. Opening holes big enough and sharp enough to catch it to open it with the thumb or the finger. Just a great, great knife. I like this one a lot, and especially because it starts in at 50 bucks. You really can't beat that. One that I want to talk about that's a little bit of a newer model is going to be the Remet Rhinoceros. And I'll have to ask my editor to throw the code name on there because if you go to Amazon and type in Remet Rhinoceros, the algorithm still hasn't picked up that that is the name of this particular model. It does the RH number. Um, so he'll throw that up on there. So first and foremost, you got 14C28N steel liners with micarta and you have a deep carry pocket clip that is not reversible and then you have a micarta backspacer with a lanyard hole so that by itself for fifty dollars is a good deal um, this is more of a medium knife so small coming into that medium but because of how it's designed if you use the cutout here and put your index finger in it for me i'm just falling off the back but it, they put a perfect landing spot here to be able to kind of move up and split the difference so I'm able to get all four hands on it, 
good, small, lightweight knife for summer carry. They're giving you aluminum that, I think that's aluminum. Um, it doesn't look like titanium, but they're giving you an aluminum accent collar. Everything is recessed, T8 and the pivot T6 everywhere else. Fairly good construction. There are a couple little things. Um, on this one here, this screw actually sits flush and it was milled out correctly. Uh, on this screw here, it does sit up a little bit, but I can fix that easily with the micarta and it could just be mine is the one that, that didn't get done right. The button does stand proud, but what is unique about this is this is a detent style knife with a compression lock style but it's really a liner lock it's not really a compression lock but it works like um a liner so on the inside here i think i have to come in from underneath to really get you to be able to see that and i'm probably going to need a light so i'll bring it back here until i can find the right angle there we go i think we got it yeah right there so you see that liner right there and then on the bottom really hard to see it up here but there is a detent ball there you go right there it is a detent ball that sits and rides on the knife like a liner lock knife and what it's doing is that when you close the knife you see it, it's of a more controlled close it's not going to be a uh, fall shut action on this one but the advantage to that is the detent does help a little bit i think this one could be tuned up a little bit more and i might need to do that myself um, it does help with the deployment kind of keeping it locked and letting you ramp up a little bit to fire it but it also because it rides along the blade path you can fail it um, it's given that constant pressure on the detent ball so you can fail it and that isn't a complaint that i have but i think this could probably be tuned it probably needs a path worn in uh, i think those things would help it a lot but if you have if you're someone that worries about the button being clicked and it opening so i'm going to press it fully and that detent ball keeps the blade from just falling out like regular use falling out like i can't get it out i'm i'm giving it a lot of gas right there so that's one of the advantages is that it's kind of keeping it locked in place and then it kind of lets you ramp up a little bit to fire it to overcome the fact that the detent path, ball path hasn't worn in yet. So I do like that a lot. Thumb studs on this are really nice. It does have a little bit of a fuller here. So you can kind of hit the fuller with the fingernail and flick it open that way. I would just use the thumb stud, but you can use that fuller. It has a front flipper on it, but it's not a very good setup. You have to kind of remember to kick upwards with it. So you got to come down low right here and hit it to go up with it. And I usually do not have an issue with the flipper tab here, but I have found with this one, you really got to get in that sweet spot. And I, I think I told you low, but I think that was wrong. Actually hitting it now, you're hitting right at the top and flipping it and you can kind of use it uh, to do that. I hit my, my thumb there. So you can use that front flipper, but it is, you do have to commit to like really ripping it to get it to deploy because that detent ball is kind of slowing it down but i like this one i think it's 55 bucks it it's a very interesting twist on here and i'm gonna do a, a like a long-term update i'm gonna do my best to carry it a bunch try to wear that detent ball in take it apart clean it up clean everything up the detent hole clean that as well and just see if it continues to get better uh no side to side play no up and down play at all it has three stop points so the lock bar the lock bar the stop pins here are engaged with the knife so when you close it those two stop pins are touching the top of the blade and then the plunge lock where it comes out is touching the bottom right here so you can see that plunge lock doesn't go in very far but it is enough for it to pop out and kind of engage so you have three points of contact to stop it there so it's a very interesting construction uh, the stop pins are not very and the lanyard pin are not perfectly flush milled on there i do have to kind of wiggle them to reconstruct that so uh, reassemble that so keep that in mind when you use this one but for the size for the money and the way that it's performed i love that 
people are trying to experiment with the technology and do something with it. So I really like this one a lot. And uh, the price point for what you're getting outside of what they're trying to do with the technology, 50 bucks, really good deal on this one. All right, let's get it into the last one because we're running a little bit long at this point and I have no idea what I'm going to have to edit. This one here coming in at under $100 during the sale. And the sale's been going on for a while. It is the Cubitidius 14C28N flat ground blade opening hole uh, deployment with a flipper tab. You're getting really well done titanium scales that have micro milling on it. Those are really nice, very well done. I liked the original Tidius, and I like this one even more. It has very comfortable ergos, nice tall scales, which fill the hand out nicely, so it feels definitely full size for sure. All four fingers fit on here. You have a forward finger choil to choke up with, with some jimping here, really nicely done. Great access to the lock bar coming in at about 40% lockup. It drops right down to the thumbnail with that flipper tab and just fall shut. I mean, Kubi has some killer action on their knives for smoothness. And the detent's well-tuned. Really snappy for the opening hole and for that flipper tab. And just listen to those sounds. Just great, great sounds. Um, the grittiness is going away a little bit as it starts to wear on that bead blast finish. That's probably one complaint. I'm not a big bead blast finish type guy. I'd rather than just stone wash the raw material, I think that looks better. You do have a deep carry pocket clip, but it is not reversible. And they have a lanyard hole, but they didn't prioritize it over the pocket clip. So that is fine. Uh, it doesn't take away from the aesthetics. I think... I think this is all steel hardware. It would have to be coming in at 100. Maybe not. These aren't the strongest magnets in the world. It actually might be titanium hardware, but I think all of the stuff on the inside steel, especially because it's not matching. So that's pretty impressive. For 100 bucks, you're getting all that titanium and you're getting 14C28N, which is a mid-grade super steel. That is going to be really easy to sharpen, really easy to maintain. It's going to hold a good edge, and it's corrosive resistant. Um, just a great looking knife. But these are, again, five knives under 100 bucks that I really like, that I think are well worth looking into. You have a variety of deployment methods here, a variety of handle and blade shapes here that I think are very interesting and very compelling. Some manufacturers that I think some people are just not really looking at or are flying under the radar, really just cool options that I wanted to share with you guys, especially to try to do something, again, a little bit more budget friendly. Let me know what you think about these picks. Have you heard of all of these? Have you not heard of all of these? Let me stop shaking the table here. Um, and what are your thoughts on these picks? And do you have them? And share your thoughts because people read the comments. They may see what you have to say about your particular model if you have any of these. I want to give a shout out to everyone out there that leaves the likes, comments, and subscribes. I appreciate each and one of you. I love you guys. I hope you have a fantastic week. Until next time, peace.